While the Minoans were struggling to combat Minotaur infestations plaguing their popular palace mazes, a different culture in modern-day Iran had tamed the deserts of Central Asia through political and militaristic might. The Medes would lay the foundation for generations of empire, including the Achaemenids, the Seleucids, and the Parthians, by creating the first empire over what is today Iran. While their successors, the Achaemenids, may get most of the credit as the Persian Empire, it would be the Medes who would set the standard for how to rule the territory. So before I start salivating over thoughts of Parthian chicken, join me as we dig into the past and learn all about the Median Empire. There's some confusion over where the term Medes come from, with two main theories pointing to the plural of the term Mada, meaning man, or the Proto-Indo-European word maid, meaning middle. That latter may relate to the unification of the six tribes that forged the Median Empire, with a centralized government to rule them, especially considering the Media were the unifying tribe. According to Greek mythology, the name came from the granddaughter of the sun god Helion, named Medea, who fled to modern-day Iran to escape a dicey marriage in Greece with her son Metis, whose name became the title of the culture. In a Roman version of the story, Medea returned to Greece in an attempted invasion, but this may have been anti-Parthian propaganda during an era in which the Romans were having issues with Parthian-Persian invasions of their eastern provinces. Archaeologically, there are three main sites we know about the Median Empire. Tepe Nush Aijan, a religious site, Godin Tepe, a fortified palace, and Babajan, likely the seat of a lower noble's vassal state. The three different sites displayed several unique aspects from each other, giving clues to their different purposes, but they also showed similar architecture that likely served as inspiration for the later architectural design under Achaemenid Empire. The Median Empire likely has its origins in the 2nd millennium BCE, when several tribes of northwest Iran expanded into the greater area towards the Persian Gulf, during the 12th to the 11th centuries. The migration and expansion coincided, likely not by coincidence, at a time when the nearby Assyrian Empire of modern-day Iraq fell into decline. As the Assyrian Empire fizzled out, the Median tribes annexed territories of the Assyrians, Elamites, and Urutarans to forge a territory covering most of western Iran. From the 10th to the 7th centuries BCE, Media fell under the influence of the rebounded Neo-Assyrian Empire, covering vassals from Cyprus and Egypt in the west to western Iran in the east. Under Emperor Sin Sharish Kun, the Neo-Assyrian Empire started to unravel rapidly, with frontier tributary tribes like the Scythians ceasing their tributary payments. Neo-Babylonians rose up in rebellion, and the Medes sided with their Iraqi neighbors, allowing them to gain independence from the ashes of the Neo-Assyrian Empire's fall. Cyraxes, who headed the Median war effort to topple the Neo-Assyrians, didn't count on his son and successor being a royal jackoff, who angered the nobles so much that his grandson led an aristocratic uprising that would end the Median Empire and found the Achaemenid dynasty. For most of their history, the Median Empire was in reality a vassal state of foreign rulers, including a quarter-century reign under Scythian rulers. Some historians, including Herodotus, suggest the tribes may not have been as unified as we think they were. The founding king, Deoxes, united the tribes under a promise to make the neutral city of Ekbatana the capital, like Washington, D.C. in the U.S. 
But some historians believe it wasn't until Cyraxes that all six tribes were actually united under a single Median ruler. That may be why most modern historians believe the Median Empire only truly formed following their independence from the Neo-Assyrian Empire, lasting until the family disputes of their independent era ended with Cyrus the Great forming the Achaemenid dynasty. Historian Helene Sanchisi Verdenberg notes that the government structure of the Medians did not match those of other imperial governments of the ancient Near East, and noted that only Greek sources called the Medians an empire. The Medians were, however, united in language, under what we now call the Median language. While there are no written records of the language, they likely did have a written form of that language due to evidence of extensive storytelling that survived through translations into Achaemenid Persian accounts. Several loan words from the Median language remain today in modern Farsi, but also in modern-day Russian, with the Median word for dog, spaka, surviving in the Russian word for dog, sobaka. There's not a lot of info on the religious practices of the Medians, but there is evidence of altars ordained with fire. This may be a predecessor to the latter Zoroastrian practice of sanctifying fire as a symbol of their monotheistic god that would rule over the later Achaemenid Empire. Greek contemporary historians claims the priests who ruled over religious proceedings were known as magi and came exclusively from a single tribe and that they were Zoroastrian priests. The modern historians question this assumption, based on the struggle Zoroastrian clerics would find under the Achaemenid Empire in converting local populations. Russian linguist Vladimir Minorsky believes the modern-day Kurds may be descendants of the Medes, with several Kurdish nationalists embracing the theory. The theory is largely inconclusive, though, with most historians and archaeologists skeptical of the claim. Cambridge University's History of the Kurds instead takes the neutral stance of stating that while there is linguistic evidence to support the claim, there is not enough archaeological or historical source material to cement the theory, and that the modern Kurdish people are more likely descended not directly from the Medians, but rather a neighboring culture that spoke a similar language. The role of an archaeologist is to give a voice to cultures of the past and of today. With the lack of surviving written accounts from the Medians themselves, it's more important than ever to conduct archaeological digs and linguistic analysis to give a voice to this lost ancient empire. Modern-day Iran, however, is undergoing their own divisive era, meaning archaeological digs may be suspended for a while. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more anthropological videos. This video was made possible by contributions to this channel's Patreon from viewers like you. Thank you.